It is 1649, a troubled year for royalty in Europe. In England, Charles I is being overthrown by the forces of Oliver Cromwell. In France, the boy king Louis XIV sits on the throne. But the country is ruled by his mother, Queen Anne, and her lover, the greedy Cardinal Mazarin. They have imprisoned the Duke of Beaufort, leader of the People's Party, the Fronde, and France is split into contending factions. Families are divided. Old friends find themselves on opposite sides.
the Duke of Bofa! All Paris seemed to be in a foul temper that summer, I remember. Damning Mazarin, cheering for Beaufort, as if it mattered which lordly rascal misruled France in the name of little King Louis. Well, it was all one to me. D'Artagnan, the forgotten lieutenant, waiting at palace doors like a lackey, remembering those brave times long ago when we defeated the great Cardinal of Richelieu. The three musketeers and I, heroes of yesterday. <laughs> now only I was left, the shabby, down-at-heel soldier, a sad relic of the old days, and a source of some amusement to the young fops of the court. Until that day when Cardinal Mazarin sent for me and offered me employment. He needed men with long swords and short purses, he said. Well, mine was short enough. I was to seek out my old comrades, Athos, Aramis, and Porthos, whom I hadn't seen in 20 years, and hire them for his service. Dirty work, no doubt, but old soldiers can't be choosers. I wonder if they'll break the Cardinal's windows again. Who hopes so? Who cares? Just politics. Long bill, it all had back again. Not at all surprised. <laughs> four, five, six. One, two, three. Four, five, six. See. One, two, three. I'm grown up. I shouldn't allow politics. So they'd better smash Mazarin's windows while they have the chance. No, you're very well. Down with Mazarin. Down with Mazarin. Down with Mazarin. Louis, that is most. Mazarin. <coughs> you interrupt our pleasure, Cardinal. A thousand pardons, sire. I thought I heard my name. May I be permitted to address Her Majesty, your mother? Have you begged an audience? Louis, the Cardinal's your Prime Minister, and it's time for your afternoon nap. Soon he will be too big to send to bed. Then your pretty little niece will lead him. Until then, you and I must rule France together. Close together. Bones! Rabble! Filth! Middle class! Let them burst their lungs. Monsieur Beaufort is safe in the dungeon of our den, and I have found the perfect jailer for him. Come and look, my dear. Down there, do you recognize him? He was rotting in the Bastille, where you sent him, my dear. Rochefort! Richelieu's creature, that reptile. They would have destroyed me. That was 20 years ago. And he's been buried alive for five of them. Now he has only one loyalty, fresh air. And with half of France against me, I need him. And every good agent I can find. Men like those musketeers who served you so well in the old days. Musketeers. Those noisy ruffians, they had their uses. One of them made love to my dressmaker, and the silly slut got herself strangled. I'd looked like a scarecrow for weeks. <laughs> I gave him this ring, and the fellow pawned it. That would be D'Artagnan. Of course I'd pawned it. Did she think I'd been living on memories? That ring was all the reward we four musketeers had got for saving her honor long ago and ruining ourselves when we killed her enemy, Milady de Winter. They called us murderers. We were disgraced, scattered, and now, 20 years after, this slippery cardinal was bidding for our swords. Silver? Skinflint? Perhaps I should be grateful to him, for on that day began the last adventure, when the four of us were all for one and one for all again. Your servant, ma'am. <laughs> oh! My God! Planchet! Hide me, master. I've got gold. 
way to the market. That's what he said. I said, what with these knees? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, do you see the fat scoundrel? Paris is full of them. And of the impudent upstarts. I was only asking. You were pouring like a peasant. Well, I should have known. A musketeer. Brave cloaks and bad manners. Can't you swaggering soy bullies even answer an honest question? <laughs> You're unarmed. I'm busy. You're lucky. Go away. Where the devil have you been, anyway? Huh? Ten years ago, I sent you out to buy cheese. You never came back. Well, oh, there was shot. Has he gone? So, you cut purses now, do you? I never. I was hungry. I've been starving. Oh, quiet, quiet. Oh. Wait. Oh. Wait. Oh. Wait. Oh. Your fat carcass might be worth feeding if you can tell me where I can find Monsieur Athos, mm -mm. Monsieur Porthos, mm -mm. Monsieur Aramis. Mm -mm. Well, answer, you foul feeder! Monsieur Aramis, Monsieur Aramis is a priest in the convent and the Queen's confessor. Dear Aramis, the jewelist, the lover and the dandy who always wanted to be a priest, so you've got your wish. Well, come on, blabberguts. Let's go and disturb him at his devotions. Monsieur Labbé won't be to boast about. Come on, get up there. I'm tired. Oh, stop whining, Planchet. Look, horseman. Oh, very good, master. Let me at him first. It's an ambush. Yeah, it's an ambush. Not for us, I'm afraid. A long time since I was worth assassinating. Oh. <laughs> How was it for you? I thought as much! My husband! You there, sir. Be off about your business. Mind your manners. Do you own the highway? What? <laughs> What do you want here? Margarita, what are you doing here? Who? I can see what you're doing here. Marguerite, stop talking and come here. No, don't stand in front of me. Don't. Right, go and talk to him. Alice, wait for me. I'll see you. Oh. I'll see you. Attack them. Attack them. Good. Hoshi, get stuck in. Stuck in. Oh, no, no, no. Side you on. Ah, thank God for that. That way. Quick, quick. Normally, we'd enter by the door. 
Don't worry, they're all filled with prayers. I'm very strict. Can you see them? There they go. I'm after them. When I was a musketeer, I'd, I'd longed to be a priest. Now I'm an abbey, and I, I miss the old days. Then join me. Oh, think of it, the four of us together again. Serving Mazarin. He's vain, greedy, Italian, and the Queen's lover. What sort of cardinal is that? I suppose your next sermon will be on poverty and chastity. I never preach. Not such a gentleman laughed at one of my sermons. I said a mass. For his soul. Ah, you're still a swordsman. Huh? Not for Cardinal Mazarin. <sighs> oh, well. I'll just have to try Porthos. Percy! Hmm. Where are you? <laughs> Not that way. Porthos is a very rich man these days. He married the great estate in Picardy. Help me with this. Yeah. You won't tempt him. Oh, I can talk porters into anything. You'll see. Crochet! Shh! Sorry. Come and hold this rope ladder. I've got it. Oh, yes, it's all mine. Farms, pastures, miles of it. These peaches are delicious. From my own orchard. Getting closer, you know. Wherever it is, somewhere. It's vintage. Exquisite. My grapes are the envy of the province, so they tell me. And the air. Mm. Oh, yes, my own air. You like it? Fragrance of money. <laughs> Happy Porthos. No, my friend, unhappy. I have neighbors, you see. Rustic gentry, poor as mice, but with ancestors and titles. I'm playing Monsieur Porthos, so they, they snub me. Oh, I've killed a couple of them. Even that gets me no invitations. So depressing. Oh, God almighty. You need action. Service, sir. A sword in your hand again. And Cardinal Mazarin can provide it. He'd give you a title. Baron Portos. What would your neighbor say then, eh? Baron? <laughs> me? But no, woman. The silver crest on me, coach. Uh-huh. By God, that I show up! <laughs> Oh, I thought it was going quite well. You say Aramis refused to join us. Incredible, a man of his gifts skulking in a nunnery. <laughs> but Tattles is bound to come when he knows I've agreed. I hope so. Aramis tells me he's changed since he adopted a son a few years ago. No more drinking or brawling, just a quiet country gentleman. Deplorable. It's hard to imagine. Atos growing old at... Peace with the world. <laughs> you can take your summons, soak it in wine, and choke on it, you time serving pen. Oh. Bring him down. Oh. Uh, bring him down. Arrest him. Find him. That's all scorned it up there. I summons you on charges of riot. Summons on me, you fool. The man there. Your father. Is he mad? Speak me. My father's drunk. I'm studying the relation of the planets. Conversation with either one of us is useless. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> summon the guard! Summon the guard! As far as I'm concerned, I've served my summons. You arrest him! That one there! reason with them. What do you think I'm trying to do?
Gentlemen, just so. Uh, one for all, come on! All fire! What's this? Hey, I've got a cat! Hey! 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 You haven't changed. This is one. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> Small world. <laughs> Raul, come here. I want to introduce you to two old comrades of mine. Raul, this is D'Artagnan and Porthos. I'm afraid. Gentlemen, Raoul does not approve of this. Or this! Come, boy! Your toy can be mended. Yeah, it's all here. It won't take a minute. Your servant, gentlemen. I'm sorry, Father. Raoul! Raoul, is this any way to treat my friends? Don't, don't be hard on him. Have you forgotten another young man 20 years ago who was most uncivil to musketeers? Give him to Porthos. He'll charm him out of it. <laughs> him. May they fall at different speeds. Why? Oh, thank you. Why do they fall at all? Like to live on, is it? What tracked them to the earth? Something to do with religion, I expect. Come on. Why should Mazarin want me? Because you're Athos, the bravest and the best. <laughs> Was I ever that? Even 20 years ago. Name? And now. Omo. What should you need me for? To fight against the front and before. Are well, you pledged to Mazarin, boy? <sighs> I've taken his pay. Then give it back. There is no honor in his service. Look, if the front want to rescue Beaufort and replace his creeping cardinal, let him. Hmm? What's it to you? You are a soldier, not a politician. Why should you serve Mazarin? To earn a living. You have your estate and your son. Aramis has his church and his women. Portus has more money than he can spend. And what have I got after 20 years? Your honor, boy. And that same clean heart that came out of Gascony all those years ago. God go with you. Four of us together again. Planchet, get on your horse if you can. Porthos is worth a dozen. Will you do something for me? Will you look after the old fool? I have a fondness for him. And the young one. <laughs> oh, good boy. Oh, sit. Sit. Oh, Does he suspect anything? No. D'Artagnan trusts me, you see. And your son, does he know? I am sending him to Paris. Come, we have a long ride ahead of us. Those who told him to me should have thought of that before. <laughs> Send his boots first. They won't get much for the rest. In nomine Patre, Filio Spiritus Sancti. You was a priest, huh? My arm. Help me, Jesu, my arm. You were the headsman of Lille? What? Yes. Help me, in God's name, my arm is broken. Twenty years ago, you beheaded a noble woman, Milady de Winter. 
You murdered her with an axe such as this. Not murder. It's my duty. You lie. You were hired to murder her by four men. Who were they? I don't know. I don't remember. Remember, and I will release you. You swear it? Oh, for pity's sake. Now, the one was called the Comte de la Fer. I never knew the others. It's the truth. The Comte de la Fer. It was his crime, not mine. Let me go. I will release you as you released her. Oh. Burn in hell. <laughs> God, what are you? Evidently not a priest. Then in God's name, why? It's an excellent disguise for a woman traveling alone. It shields her from all sorts of danger. You murdered that man. No, monsieur. I did justice on one of the butchers who murdered my mother. For years I have been seeking them, and today I found the first. He has paid and guided me to the four others. That's incredible. I don't believe you. That hardly matters under the circumstances, does it, monsieur? Raoul. The Comte de Bragelonne. Oh, a nobleman. Your family crest? It's my adopted father's. Comte de la Fer. La Fer. I've heard that name before. No matter. I must not deprive such a noble house of so precious an heirloom, now must I? I don't understand. I have no quarrel with you, Monsieur de Bragelonne. You will hardly try to quarrel with me again now, will you? But that man! That poor fellow who was murdered by a mad priest. Do I look like a mad priest? Would anyone believe you if you said I was? Do I look like... a murderer, Raoul? But you killed him. In cold blood. Yes. I executed my mother's murderer. Suppose it had been your own mother. I never knew her. She must have been beautiful, young, full of life. If men had slaughtered her like a beast in the shambles, what would you have done, though? Oh, oh straight in. Oh. Bad luck, sir. Oh, just... <laughs> No, through <laughs> here, Monsieur Le Duc. Oh, a moment, gentlemen. Twit. If the Duke of Beaufort attempts to escape, you will shoot him down. I say, yes. uh, fellow. Uh, fellow, may we have our ball back? Uh. Hmm. The ball is cracked. Healthy game of pell-mell, my Lord Duke. Yeah. Your followers are playing a somewhat more strenuous game. My own invention. Oh. Look. 
Is it Thursday tonight? They're chained to their seats. If they stop pumping, they drown. Pull in your end. Enjoy your game, sir. Pump it, boys. I'll get the rope. Oh. Stand on my shoulder, sir. Sorry about my shoulder, sir. Let me help you, sir. Sorry about my hand, sir. Step on my head if you like, sir. Sorry about my head, sir. Well, good luck to you, sir. You've got a lucky face. Well, that made a change, didn't it? And how precisely did the Duke of Beaufort escape? Or didn't you notice? He had accomplices. Who, how many, I don't know. I rode as fast as I possibly In could. the wrong direction, alas. Beaufort, being intelligent, will make it for the frontier. Eminence, I will be in the saddle immediately. You will be in your quarters, sir. Under arrest. Until I decide how to dispose of you. The captain of the guard, at once. No. Don't be nervous. This cardinal's not like the old one. And he's going to make you a baron, remember? You really think he will? Uh -huh. Is he a cardinal of his word? You may count on it, Monsieur Porthos. Your barony is riding for the frontier at this very moment. Don't let it escape. Bring it safe to me, and I shall place it in your hands. Ah. Come on, baron. Oh, my goodness. Now, wait. Wait for me. You men there! Follow me! What? Oh, God. Oh, God. Who is that? This way! Two horsemen pursuing, sir! Now get on with it! Faster! We're not good for you see what becomes of locking your enemy up like a criminal instead of cutting his throat like a gentleman. That's what I'd have done to Beaufort if I'd been Mazarin. God forbid. Faster! Faster! Still following us, sire? This escaping duke was not the foolish weakling he pretended to be. He had half of France on his side, and unless we caught him, he'd raise a storm that might sweep our oily cardinal out of office. And where would my promotion and Portus's title be then, eh? They are numbers three to one! If we can put a pistol in Bofo's head, then now that won't matter! Leave it to me. You deal with it. Hey, 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 hey. He said it was his wife. Come on, come on. He was <laughs> and, and it was Lent. <laughs> And the curate Up you said to me... Come on, clear it up! Said, clear it up! Go on, vamos! Let's have some lunch. Oh, uh, all right. Uh, oh. Go away. Go away! Go away! What that damn sword can... <coughs>
Monsieur Le Duc, I know all these men, sire, personally. If you will ride on, I will ensure that they all remain neutral. Right, let's go. Come on, drive on! Steady, Pascal. You made fools of us. Why didn't you tell us you were Beaufort's man? I expected honesty from you at least, Athos. Oh, you turned Jesuit as well. By God, I won't take that from you, D'Artagnan. Ah! Damn you all, wrong man! That's us, my anonymous! Comrades! What the devil are we fighting for? You treated us like children, not to be trusted. You are Mazarin's men, boy. If we had told you, you would have had to have chosen between us. What would you have done? You have to say that to me! Damnable insult. What would we have done? Run tattling to Mazarin, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, D'Artagnan! Aramis, I swear to God, I didn't mean to... He struck in anger. You provoked it. Take his hand. We have been friends for too long to fall out over a word and a blow, Aramis. <laughs> I didn't mean... Oh, for God's sake, let's go! One for all and all for one! is free and will sweep away the corrupt regime of Mazarin. Oh, it can happen. In England, Oliver Cromwell is overthrowing a king. Yes, the world is changing, my friends. The hell with Mazarin. The hell with Mazarin. God save the king. God save the king. To hell with Mazarin. To hell with Mazarin. God save the king. What appalling handwriting. Oh, a careful man. Here, let me. Why do the working class delight in destroying the property of their betters? Via, via. Go away, please. So, the English Civil War is over, eh? And roundheads have captured their king. But Cromwell doesn't say what they will do with him. Depose him, and then... King Charles's death is inevitable. And France must not interfere. General Cromwell insists. Roundhead diplomacy. Does he think he can cut off a crowned head, even an English one, and royal France will stand by doing nothing? What will France do? Stand by. Protesting. My ministry wouldn't last a day if I declared war. We shall be noisily neutral. You may give Monsieur Cromwell my word, provided... No one knows I've given it.
He's the winner, so I must be friends with him. But how long will you waste your talent serving that Anglo-Saxon's heaven? <laughs> your eminence knows of a more civilized service? Infinitely. I can always use reliable agents, and I pay better than Monsieur Cromwell. Cardinal, this rabble Sire. at the gate. I will not... Who is this lady? Sire, may I present you Mademoiselle de Winter? An English diplomatist. English diplomacy is beautiful. Oh, your Majesty. Rise, Mademoiselle. You look disturbed. Uh, pardon, sir. I understood that your Majesty was, oh, forgive me, much younger. Who told you that? You did, I suppose. Well, I shall be 11 next year. Only 11? Oh, your Majesty is teasing me. You see, Cardinal, I am not a child anymore. You may go. I wish to speak to Mademoiselle. Forgive him, Mademoiselle. He's a tiresome fellow. A useful accountant. But he is rather old. Mm. What did you say to Mazarin? Well, the Duke of Buffo escaped thanks to a, a dozen of his men who held us off. <laughs> so, he kicked us out. No barony for Portos, no promotion for me. You see before you two unemployed gentlemen. Well, I cannot say I'm sorry. You two are made for better stuff than serving Mazarin. On my way here, I saw a woman disguised as a priest kill a headsman with his own axe. Young women nowadays, eh? She said he was a mother's murderer. He and four other men, 20 years ago. Oh, God. I didn't believe it at first. But then she explained, and, and we talked. And we talked. What did she look like? What did she say? Her name is Justine de Winter. Her mother was English. And her looks, oh, she was beautiful. Justine de Winter. Did she say who the other four men were? She said the headsman had led her to them, but. My God. You three? And Aramis. But it wasn't murder, Ralph. I know what you think of musketeers, but we're not assassins. Milady de Winter was evil. She deserved to die. What of us love do you see? She wants us still. Through her daughter. Rochefort's bastard. Oh, I have heard of the child of the years. How she grew into an assassin like her mother. A courier. A spy for Oliver Cromwell. Once she knows our names, her mother's executioners, what will she do? One thing we must do. We must prepare ourselves. Madame, it seems likely that the English will cut off their king's head. Oh, don't be silly, they can't. Isn't he my brother-in-law? Your son's uncle, in fact. Cromwell intends to put him on trial for treason. It's impossible. Kings can't commit treason or be put on trial. I mean, where would it end? 
Oh, it's unthinkable. His people will never permit it. The people of England, madame, will permit anything except cruelty to horses or a rise in the price of beer. Mm. King Charles must be saved. He's one of us. I'm sorry, my dear. Only a miracle can pluck Charles Stuart's head from beneath the axe. Chevreuse! Chevreuse! <laughs> Stomach. Now that's a stomach. I think, ooh. A king is always head and shoulders above his subjects. Where are you going? Um, I'll teach you to meddle with a king. You heard that. Go, 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 please. Congratulations. I've never seen His Majesty so captivated. Little monsters are just as susceptible as big ones. But your eminence is troubled. My eminence is enraged. You will tell General Cromwell that the Queen, Dio mio, women, proposes to send a party of ruffians, French uh -huh. ruffians, if you please, to rescue King Charles. It is none of my doing. Make that clear. Who are they? A pair of blunderers, uh -huh. D'Artagnan and Porthos. She's sending for them today, and a retired bully named uh -huh. Athos. D'Artagnan Porto's at us. I'll inform the general. And remind him I am not to blame. He will oblige me by disposing of these rascals. Hmm. Have no fear. Oliver Cromwell is a very thorough man. Hmm. 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 Both ends again. Here. There's teeth marks in it. Flaming me. Oh, at my wrist. Bring that bandage at home to mother. You. What do you want? Mazarin's bloodhounds are at my heels. I've I've been in hiding. And then and then I heard that you were here in Paris. Justine, you must help me. Why should I? I can't go. I'm your father. You remembered. Your memory wasn't so keen when you abandoned me in England. You're inconvenient bastard. How often have I seen you since? I've been rotting these five years and the Bastille. And you can rot in there forever. Get out. Justine. Justine, you can't turn me away. I have to get out of France. You can take me on your passport as a servant. Please, Justine, have you no pity at all? As much as you had for me or for my mother, whose murderers you left unpunished. Oh, what could I do? I was bleeding my life out in the church at Amontier when they took her. That was 20 years ago. Have you even tried to look for them? For the Comte de la Fere? What do you know of him? Only his name. Not the other three. Who were they? Better you should never know. Believe me, child, they are fatal men. Their names, dear father, are your passport to England. Or shall I call the cardinal's bloodhounds? Aramis. Portos. D'Artagnan. Once I gave you a diamond ring, Monsieur D'Artagnan, and you and these brave gentlemen saved my honor, perhaps my life. Now you go to save the life of my brother monarch, and I have no ring to give you. Nothing indeed except my prayers. God bless you all. So young, so gallant. God speed you, gentlemen. You will always have the love and the gratitude of your queen. And we know what that's worth. You can stop groveling, boy. She's gone. Oh, this is superb. 
We'd get our throats cut, rescuing a foreign king and pay our own expenses. Why do we do it? Because she's a queen. No, 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 no. We do it because we are gentlemen. And if we refused her, we would not be. And of course, queens have power and influence and honors to bestow, like a barony, remember? Of course. This will be savage work for hard men, hired swords. I know your scholarly distaste for this kind of thing, perhaps also for me. But you will do it because the queen commands it. No, because my father wants me. Is that collection of old bones achieve anything? The equally old bones in the head of your confessor merely made a suggestion, Majesty, not a guarantee. So, oh, up to the walls, Master. A different kind of wall, Master. If they catch you, they hang you. Let's make a change. Good afternoon, Messieurs. The steam. You will be the Comte de la Fer. Once the husband, later the murder of Milady de Winter. My God. It is her image. Not murder, mademoiselle. Your mother's life was forfeit before the law, but as God's my witness, we did not take it willingly. Now your lives are forfeit, and I am most willing. Christine, let me your talk Your son's you. life for my mother's, Monsieur le Comte? I am the one you call murderer. Ah. Ah. The thing. My mother preferred glass daggers, I remember. Fine looking girl, my dear. Father, you're wounded. You think she'll be waiting for us in England? I don't predict the future, boy. I know the past, that's enough. from Cardinal Mazarin. Will you speak to the levelers, General? When God is willing and I've had my breakfast, Captain The court for findings. Three mutineers sentenced to hand. Three is too many. One will serve for an example. Which one, sir? Oh, 
Go oh, help the loser. Some of appetite, but no meat. Some of meat, but no appetite. I have both. God be thanked. Amen. Adam, what will you take? Uh, by your leave, General, this is Monsieur de Batz, a Huguenot soldier who was persecuted for his faith. He seeks service among the godly. Give me your hand, Master Batz. Welcome in God's name. That is beef before you or mutton, if you wish. Walter, the caper sauce to Master Batz, ale for the lady. So, madam, these Frenchmen wish to steal the king from us. I heard the queen instruct them herself. They may be in England already. They are an officer named Italian, the Comte de la Fere. Count Saint, Raoul, one for those two Vallon, but not unmistakably their former accomplice, who is now the Queen's co confessor. Yes, they are in England, in spite of your efforts to stop them. I have many ears and eyes besides yours. Master Batts has no napkin, Walter. Then you will arrest them. To everything there is a season, lady. It is whispered in my ear that you have some private spite against these Frenchmen. I have. You wish to put yourself in their way, you and your father here. Never fret, Master Rochford. I've hidden my own name upon occasion. Serve me as well as your daughter has, and you may call yourself what you will. You are well informed, sir. Which is one reason why Charles Stewart, not I, will stand trial for treason. And then? The providence of God has cast it upon us. We will cut off his head with a crown upon it. He goes to London tomorrow. Follow him to the scaffold, and if God wills, you shall meet your Frenchman. And which club would Your Majesty like this time? As if it mattered. Eh, the holes are there, Your Majesty. Miss Bonemada. This King Charles, whom we were to rescue, was a very devout man. Even in captivity, he observed the religious exercises of his native Scotland. Oh, cruel misfortune. Bloody terrible. We had laid an ambush to seize the king from his captors. Too late. At the last moment, a roundhead troop arrived to carry him to London and his trial. Charles Stuart, the Council of Officers has summoned you to London. Well, as Charles Stuart, King of England, is and standeth convicted, attained and condemned of high treason and other high crimes, having been called to answer in the name of the people of England, this court doth sentence him to die by the severing of his head from his body, which sentence to be executed in the open space before Whitehall at the hour of ten in the morning of the thirtieth day of this instant month. Let him rot in hell! I am not suffered to speak. Expect what justice other people will have. Now our only hope was to snatch him from the scaffold itself. If we could remove the public headsman, it would buy us precious time until they found another ready to commit the sacrilege of killing his king. Among these strangely loyal English rebels, it would not be easy. <laughs> what are you doing? Juggling. Juggling? <laughs> well, I'm only just starting. Let Raoul do the talking. Uh. <clears throat> ah, a scaffold for the man of sin. Now, God be praised. Tell me, my friend, what is thy wish? Threepence a day. Why? Well, my friends and I would pay gladly to do such holy work. It's like unto the building of a tabernacle to the Lord. You bloodthirsty bastard. Profanity pales thy soul, they might. But there are fifty of these. Thou yieldest a task to us. Spend them in good cheer. Leave that. Come on. Follow me. I shall be here tomorrow. Behind that wall, there's an empty room, and above it, the king's cell. And our boat is waiting at Greenwich. Get 
on with it. Don't you make so much noise. The king's trying to sleep. Well, he'll sleep well enough tomorrow night. <laughs> well, make haste. The time's fixed for ten o'clock. If you can find a headsman. Oliver Cromwell was wrong. You shall not see our Frenchmen. They wouldn't dare come near the king. You don't know them. I do. They say the headsman has disappeared. Well, won't they find another one? Never! Can't proceed without one. Sure. We'll have to wait for night. We can't risk it with all these people about. There must be thousands out there. And they will be disappointed. God, I hope so. Suppose they found another execution. An Englishman is a cold creature. Today cannot be the day. It would be in good taste to toast the king. Perhaps a trifle premature. What's happening? Behold the head of a traitor! <laughs> Signature. Will you count to sign the death certificate, General? God damn you! You should be proud. Not everyone is privileged to kill a king. Come, we have a debt to collect. You're prudent, madam. I was trained by Oliver Cromwell, for whom I have now killed a king. And the laborer is worthy of his hire. Where's your father? Drowning his remorse. Uh, not in that chair. Sir, you promised me those four Frenchmen. Hmm. Have you found them? I never lost them. They were under the scaffold when the axe fell. They had a ship to carry the king to France. They did not know it was packed with gunpowder and manned by my people. He would have exploded in mid-channel and Charles Stuart would have died by the hand of God, not the hand of Cromwell. But he is dead anyway. It matters not who bears the blame. What matters to me is those four men. Where are they? They will board their ship to France. 
still lies at Greenwich with its cargo of gunpowder. Make what use of it you will. So. You're paid. Come no more to England. I'll be with you, lady. No. Since I take a king's place, I must go openly, not like a thief in the night. Will you make yourself king? A man never mounts so high as when he knows not where he is going. He's been in there two hours. Then why are we waiting? What are you going to do? Kill her. Side, please. And leave my true love. Why? <laughs> Besides, we must ask your father's blessing. Drop the sword, Mum. You have my word, you will not be harmed. Is that what you told my mother? Gallant. One at a time, mademoiselle. That's me, D'Artagnan. Gentlemen, lady's choice. Surely. Let me see. Perhaps the Comte de la Fere. I do not fight women. Ah, but of course you prefer to murder them. Then I fear it must be my forest. <laughs> Lover. Justine, I can't fight you. Father! Father's reluctance seems to be infectious. So...
Captain Crossler. Aye. And General Cromwell. You take your orders from me. Is the gunpowder aboard? It is. Show me. You get the boats down here. All clear. Come on. Where's the king? His majesty is not coming. You can get underway. Pass off, Jake. Come on, below. Drop the sail down. Watch out. Stay down. Water edge. Line your head. <laughs> All clear on top. I told you it was going to be foggy. What's your cargo? Port wine for Beloy. 200 casks of it. What's this? What you're doing? Can't be too careful, sir. Risk of fire. What's in there? Storeroom, sir. Oh, the English beer. Well, counting this filth. It's a drink, isn't it? There's a cargo of port wine in there. Is that by God? Oh, well, that'll do. Oh. Let me go away. Yeah. Having breakfast. We'll raise the French coast any time now. Then we'll set the fuse and take to the boat. How much gunpowder is there? A couple of tons. My lads are standing by. Got a bungo. Typical. Kiss him. Stuff. Here we are. Now then, gentlemen, let me fill your glasses. Here we are. This is better than beer. Damn it all. I suppose it's English port? Gunpowder! With a fuse burn. Five minutes. Lay it now. I'll tell you when to light it. Lock them in and guard the door. It's gonna burn through in about two minutes. You see, education does have it. Yes, yes. all right, all right, all right. Quickly put to the boat. Take the boat. Yeah! 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 Yeah!
to be lucky at cards. Is she... I mean, is, is she... By God, I hope so. Where is the king? They were still politicking away in Paris as noisily as ever. Mazarin clinging to power. Beaufort back at court, worming his way into the queen's favor. And what a welcome Her Gracious Majesty had for her returning musketeers. They bay like dogs at my window with their demands. No one does anything. Can't they be put to work? Or shot? I will be obeyed. I'm either Queen of France or a kitchen maid. And the chocolate was cold. I'm surrounded by dotes. Rebels, incompetence. Failures. Listen to that unwashed rabble. If only your majesty would. They are so little. A few reforms, lower taxes, the dismissal of Mazarin. They know he lines his pockets, and they fear he intends to take the king out of Paris. And if he should? Is Paris a fit place for the king? With those radicals howling at his gate? Do you dare scowl at me, sir? May God forbid, Majesty. But if a failure may venture some advice, keep the king in Paris. If you serve King Louis as well as you served King Charles, God help the crown. Swaggering, useless old men out of my sight. And you can tell the mob that they will not see the king and that I will not dismiss Cardinal Mazarin. He has my complete confidence. That goes in the second coach. Those in my saddlebags. Where's the rest of my jewellery? Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, it goes under the seat. Quick, quick, quick. Oh. You. You're meant to be in England. How did you get here? I swam part of the way. Your eminence is leaving France. Leaving Paris. A brief holiday. Before they tear me to pieces. And to teach... These infernal reformers, a lesson, please. And you're leaving Paris will do that? The king's leaving Paris will do it. It's time he learned how to rule, and I intend to teach him in the rural solitude of our den, undisturbed by political opponents. You kidnap him, but why take the risk when you can get him to go of his own free will? Find me something more feminine, and I'll arrange it for a price. Four death warrants. Oh, you don't need beating up and so 
guys. Would you like to come to a lovely palace? What, with you? Oh, I'd like that. Coronet and fair robes, don't I, Raoul? Baron Porters. Ah, well. About as likely as Captain D'Artagnan. What is that stuff, Raoul? That's a new China drink. An infusion of Bohelis, known as tea. Try some? There's no alcohol in it. Uh, master! Master! Oh, God, she isn't drowned. She's with the king. And the cardinal. Uh, drunk. Which way do they go? Beyond the bridge. Through the gates. Mazarin's castle, not there. Get the horses. Right, yeah. We haven't got any horses. Then buy some! <laughs> and Icarus, my friends, has mortal man mastered the secret of flight and conquered the mysterious force that makes things fall down when you drop them. But now, you good people of Ardennes, you'll be privileged to witness me, the Chevalier Cyrano de Bergerac, begin my historic journey to the moon. Please. Hey, thank you. I show them. I shall be drawn by a flock of specially trained geese whose strength will be sustained on the arduous journey by supplies of the choicest grain while I wing my way to my lunar destination. At nine tomorrow, the epic aerial voyage begins. Now the drawbridge. I am lowering it. Hello, good morning. That'll do. You don't want to get horses. Didn't say good horses. Those who hold the king's hand have funds by the throat. At least the king's not in any danger. Will that hellcat tucking him up in bed at night? Let us get him out of there. Quickly. Four of us against those walls. How do we get in? Fly? Smith! Red Hot Coals at dawn, and your name will live in the annals of lunar flight. Tell me, and I burn down your smithy. To the inn, and procure me the finest bed in our den. Silken sheets, perfume pillow, the choicest meat, the finest wines, soft music to lull me into the arms of Morpheus. No less will do for de Bergerac. <laughs> Away. To Arden? Oh, you would not dare. Without my permission. Damn you, Beaufort, I don't care if we went willingly or not. No, I... And you say those four ruffians were seen on the Ardennes road. Yes, 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 four. It's a plot. Yes, plot. Don't tell me Mazarin can do as he pleases with the King of France. No, he can't. My son. Yes. What insolence. Absolutely. Who am I? Well, you're... you're... Will someone answer? Uh, Who am I? Finest bed in our den. The finest wines. Oh. Hmm? Cast off! Oh, shit. 
Come on, blow this thing out. Oh, all right. Come on. Quick, spread the balloon out. Ooh. Spread it out. So, uh... My friends are poor. He has your majesty's interests at heart. I dare say, when I'm grown up, you shall choose me a wife. Some dull princess. And I shall make you my mistress. Is that to honor your majesty? Oh, no. It'll soon be broad daylight the way we're going. Bergerac is an idiot. When he wakes up, I'll tell him so. Moaning, indeed. But he is waking up. <coughs> an idiot! What about the geese? They don't seem to be helping. Damn the geese. Tell them loose, Poshy. Come on, man. Quick, quick. Here we go again. We're off. We're off. Come on, Poshy. Here's my hand. Now, now, come on, man. Jump. Jump. Up. 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 I said up, not down. Well, hold on. Wait there. Wait. God, be quiet. Bye. This castle smells. How many guys have you? Twenty, with orders to admit no one. Not even the Queen herself. Uh, one and not ten. Not more sandbags, but we're sinking. You, you big nose buffoon, wake up! Wake up! Oh. Make it fly! Oh, the moon! We'll crash! How do we keep this thing aloft? Uh, fools, throw up more ballast! <laughs> Stay back! 
My God, I don't. Sit down, Your Eminence. There. So, Her Majesty's confessor attacks the King's castle in company with brigands. My name is the Comte de Lafayre. My concern is for the King's safety and for yours. It's quite simple. You'll take that pen and write as we dictate, or we'll kill you. No. You won't be the first. What I write under duress will have no value. When the King seals it, it will have value. That is why you brought him here, to ratify your decrees. So now. You must write them. What do you want? Full concession to all demands made by the form. Come. It will make you popular. A little poorer, perhaps, but you'll be alive. And you will have cut the ground from underneath Monsieur Beaufort's feet. Dear me, you're politicians. I mean no offense. Ink, your eminence. Excellent. And the next? There's more. Oh, no. Monsieur Porthos de Laon to be created baron. And the Abbe Aramis d'Herblay to be made bishop. Oh, Jesus. Why not Pope? After your eminence, perhaps. Raoul de Bragelonne to be commissioned in the guards. Lieutenant d'Artagnan to be given a captaincy on active service as he wishes. And nothing for you? That is nothing you can give him. But, I mean, when you have me at your mercy, there must be something, no? Money? Patronage? A position? Money? There is one thing you can do for me, sir. Make Mazar a name to be honored in the history of France. Oh. Monsieur.
But I suppose you'd come back from the wars, laden with prize money, buying half of Paris. It's all very well for you in your convents and chateaus and baronial estates, but these soldiers have to work for a living. Well, it was, it was good to be together again. One for all and all for one. Yeah. That does. Goodbye, Gascon. Aramis? God keep you, D'Artagnan. What can I say? Mind you do as credit in the wars. Mm. I'll come back with the Marshal's battle. Hey! Hey! Changed. Still the same young, brave fool came out of Gascony 20 years ago. Do you remember? And the three musketeers became four. Oh. Is it really 20 years since that young fire eater challenged all three of us? It is. 20 years. Counted on every damn day. Go on counting him, I suppose, as we grow older.